Hey, I'm Pastor Mike Marks. I'm here with Jason Yancey, and we are so excited to follow up with an announcement that I'd made of our new Cross Point Christian Academic Pod School, or CAPS for short, with a more detailed explanation of what CAPS actually looks like for you, the parent, and for your student. But before we dive in, I want to introduce ourselves. Again, my name is Mike Marks. I'm the senior pastor here at Cross Point Church in Powderly. Uh, my wife, Amy, and I, we've been married for 21 years. Uh, we've got four kids, and we've been foster parents of dozens of kids. And we started this church just four years ago, along with a few other godly men and women, and God has just blessed us tremendously. And so we're excited for this next chapter in Crosspoint. Uh, Jason? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, my name is Jason Yancey. Um, I am the associate pastor here at Crosspoint. Um I have a wife named Sarah, and we have uh, four children. We've been married almost 14 years, and uh, we've been attending Cross Point um, right around a year and a half, two years. Okay. Hey, tell us about your education. So I received my bachelor's degree uh, from the University of the Cumberlands, which is in Williamsburg, Kentucky. That's my hometown, um, in psychology uh, with a minor in missions and ministries okay and, and since i've been in education i have um, applied and been accepted to uh, the southern baptist theological seminary in louisville and mm -hmm. i'm going to get a master's in christian education okay so you've been a teacher tell us about your experience in teaching yeah so i was in uh the pharmacy industry for a little over 20 years um, and I kind of topped out in that industry and, um, it was, it was, there was an opportunity that was presented to me that I was able to teach, uh, that subject, which was new to me, but, um, to find somebody that's really good at pharmacy and to find somebody that can teach it is, is a tough thing to do. So I kind of fit, um, fit that bill very, very good. And then, um, through, teaching on the college level i kind of got my um i don't know i guess you can earn your stripes i guess you could say in the college um realm and then once those programs um kind of fell off um i ended up getting into more of an elementary uh setting for a year and then just recently was moved up to a middle school high school uh science teacher now you've been teaching in a christian school is that correct yes been teaching in a christian small christian uh school uh here locally okay awesome so you've got experience teaching adults you've got experience teaching the kids so so tell us where you feel like the lord has really got you yeah so other than the fact that i feel absolutely called to, to do this um, i think god has put his uh, put his hand on this situation and called me to this um out of the two I would say that my heart and my passion would be toward the younger kids. Um, no real age uh, in particular. I do enjoy uh, the middle school and high school students um, just because uh, I like to build that rapport with them. Um, you know, we, we like to, uh, you know, relate to one another. Um, but also because I feel like by that age, there's a lot of influences out there that, yeah. uh, that can make them stumble. Um, and I like to be that that person that you know if they ever have questions that they can come talk to sure. me, um, and it, and it tends to be that they'll come um, to you and ask you more so than than an elementary school kid might. Yeah, they don't quite realize the questions that they're about to right. want to ask just yet. So right. yeah, you know when we started this church, we started and meeting in these coffee shops before we ever launched at all, and uh, for several weeks we the group would get together. And we would just talk about what the Lord had laid on our heart. And every time we would always agree that God had called us to the youth in our community. And so that was part of our core values here at Cross Point Church was to reach our youth. And we have these last four years, we have poured our hearts into these youth. We've taught them uh, the teaching of Jesus. We've taught them the Bible. We have tried our best to equip them and, and spiritually uh, to lead and guide them as young adults and, and our little kids, teaching them how to worship and how to pray, uh, how to memorize Bible scripture. We have been so fortunate to baptize dozens and dozens just in this short amount of time. We've seen salvations 
and, and just kids get their lives turned around. So on a spiritual level, it has been incredible. But what's remarkable is about a couple of years ago, the Lord really laid on our heart here at Cross Point to start a Christian school. And that's a big undertaking, and so we've prayed about it. And then when Jason and his family come on board, you know, they joined us, and we're praying about it. We're all excited about this, and we're just praying about this school. And, but one thing I've learned about God is the vision that God gives you sometimes don't look like what you think the vision is supposed to look like. You know, I thought that years from now we would uh, – get a big building, and, and we would start this school and, and have all these kids, and we would just be a <clears throat> typical, traditional uh, Christian school. But we have found out that God, sometimes God don't wait for us, and sometimes God just don't wait around. Mm -hmm. And so here we are. We've got this incredible opportunity. We, we just feel like God has downloaded, especially in these last few weeks, just downloaded this vision into our hearts. And we're, timing is of the essence. So we, we're excited that we're starting this school. And yes, it's mid-year, but we'll be starting in January of 2024. And so this school, uh, which some would call it, it's like a micro school, if that helps you understand mm -hmm. what, what pod is. Uh, so that's, that's kind of what we're looking at. Jason, uh, with, with your heart and your passion, tell us a little bit about how God has been speaking to you about this school. Yeah, absolutely. Well, to back on your last point there, you know, we think we got to have certain things laid out, right? But I mean, we do have a building here. God has given us yeah. this opportunity. And um, it's so funny that I think you and I both were just, you know, kind of hit with that this week or last week or whenever it was, we kind of were on the same wavelength whenever we were like, you know, we can do this now. We can do this. Yeah. Um, and we don't have to have everything exactly the way we thought um, that it needed to go. Um, but to, to your point there, to, to your last question, um, so talking about the, the, the overall, what I see in a, in a small kind of uh, group like this, um, I see uh, the fact that, you know, we can teach young to older, right? Yes, right. W you know, we're in a situation, uh, at least for right now, and uh, hopefully this grows, and if it does, we'll just bring on more people sure. and we'll have a great time. Um, but as for right now, as we start, um, you know, I know for a fact my youngest is in first grade and you're, you know, you're, you're, you have a 10th grader coming on. Yep. So we're going to have that kind of a mix um, in this place and that's OK. Yeah. Um, and and we're, we're really looking at having this kind of a small, intimate setting. And what that does for us is that allows us to um, to give that one on one um, to to these students. Yeah. Um, you know, they're coming in here and they're going to be doing academics, absolutely. But I think that one of the things that makes um, this particular setting and environment um, and, and how we're going to facilitate this is it, it brings about um, just an exciting uh, idea for me to see um, how we can we can interact with, sure. with this many different ages yeah. um, and still be successful with it. That's, well, I'm looking forward to it. And it, it kind of lends to probably some questions. I mean, how could we pull this off with that, uh, that age gap? And so for your information, now the education model and the curriculum that <clears throat> we're using is a nationally recognized discovery K through 12. So this is a homeschool uh, curriculum. And, and we love homeschool curriculum because we know that research tells us that Traditionally, homeschool students test higher than public school uh, students. And so we, we have a focus <clears throat> on academia through the homeschool uh, curriculum. But talk about why it's advantageous for parents to enroll their students in this small group environment. And you've talked a little bit about that. Yeah. But for the students themselves. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so what I feel like is, is such a fantastic opportunity for these students coming in here is w we not only take care of the academic side, uh, we want to take care of, of the entire person. Um, so mind, body, spirit. Um, you know, in, in, in a lot of your traditional schools, um, the academic side is extremely heavily weighted. And then, of course, we do have some physical activity to make sure that the body is taken care of, too. Um, one thing that 
one of the main things that we want to do while we're here is, uh, of course, we're going to focus on academics, and of course, we're going to focus on physical activity, but we want to make sure that, again, the whole person, yes. um, mind, body, and spirit is taken care of. Um, and, and just back to that, you know, t you were talking about COVID, you know, we all thought that COVID was going to be the end of what we knew, and it did change a lot of things, yeah. but the good thing is, is that, you know, one thing that happened through COVID is that a lot of people became really good at online instruction. And a lot of these states started doing a lot more virtual academies or yeah. like what we're talking about, this uh, Discovery K-12. And uh, so many um, things are already put into that curriculum for the students where they can, if they need help, it's there. But also that's why we're here too. Yeah. Um, if that doesn't do it for them, then we're going to be here to facilitate that as well. So I think uh, even though we thought it was a terrible time, and it was, of course, a time where we all had to adjust, but, you know, there are some good that, that came out of it. And here we are in a situation where we're kind of under the gun, forced to do something, and it makes it a lot easier that, you know, we can have this online instruction. Well, you know, Jason, a lot of parents are like me. Um, you know, when, when 2020 came along and our kids were at home and, it, and a lot of us were forced to be homeschool teachers, we found out real quick that our kids didn't have the best teachers uh, <laughs> that maybe they should have had. Not so qualified. Not so qualified. <laughs> and so, you know, you are, that's your gift. That's what you're called to do. But, you know, a lot of us aren't called to do that. Right. And so, sure, you could homeschool your kids. But what we're trying to do is offer this opportunity with the, uh, again, the excellence of homeschool uh, curriculum, but with someone qualified to instruct and to teach and also to incorporate uh, our Christian worldview. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, I, I, we'll, be, we'll have this base curriculum. And, and, and as a religious organization, we are afforded the right to interject our worldview, as I'm saying. And so not only will be teaching our kids multiplication, but our kids will also be learning about uh, the Ten Commandments. They'll be learning about the leadership principles of Jesus Christ. And, and this is one of our core uh, values is to make sure that your student is a leader. And, and you'll see, and we'll talk about this in just a moment, but you'll see that one of the things that we want to do here in this school is we don't just want to teach them ABCs. We want to make sure that your kids are learning how to be leaders, how to be entrepreneurs, how to learn how to interact with these other students, which, again, we, a lot of us found out that it was so detrimental to our kids during that time. They were holed up in this room, and there was no interaction with other students. And... So we believe this environment is going to combine the best of both worlds. It's a small group environment. You get the best curriculum, but also it's through our family values, our Christian worldview. Um, so tell us, uh, Jason, tell us what the schedule would look like. And, and you don't have to tell us every hour, but tell mm -hmm. us what a weekly schedule would look like here at, at the school. Yes, so we're going to do like a, a Monday through Thursday, pretty structured schedule. Uh, Fridays will look a little different um, just because I, I feel like um, we, don't want, we don't want the students to, to not want to come here. Um, so one of the things that we want to do is we want to we add fun to, to education. And education doesn't have to be a drag all the time. There are, of course, there are some things that you just don't want to do. Um, but the way that the schedule is going to look for the most part is we're going to start our days at 8 a.m. Um, we're going to start with pledges. We're going to start with uh, Bible verse. We're going to start with prayer. Um, and then right after that, we're going to go into a chapel time. Um, and we just call it chapel. Uh, I guess that's more of a traditional term for what we're going to do. But we're really just looking to um, interact with, with the students in that particular uh, environment in that way. Um, and start off our day the right way. Yeah. And we want to make sure that we do that. And again, with such a small number, uh, if we're starting off with a small number, we're starting off with a large number, we'll see. Yeah. But if we're starting off with a, with a small number, it gives them the opportunity to uh, get involved. Um, you know, probably in the first couple of weeks, you know, maybe just give a prayer request or two. But maybe by the, by the time that, you know, our second uh, term or, or, you know, rolls around, uh, maybe they can, you know, be talking. Maybe they can be speaking. Maybe yeah. they can be leading prayer. Or yeah. maybe they can be doing those things. And that's what we're looking at. Um, so that's how we start our day off. Uh, it is proven that, uh, especially on the elementary side, that um, uh, they learn 
uh, or they're more focused in the early part of the day. Um, so we're going to hit those uh, kind of core curriculum things a little bit harder in the beginning, uh, especially for our elementary students. So math, um, science, and uh, language arts, English language arts. Um, we're going to make sure we hit those early. Um, and then as we, you know, break for lunch, come back, we'll probably have a recess in there. We'll have some life skills potentially in there. Um, another thing that makes uh, fantastic for a small group is that we can huddle them together and, uh, you know, do some things that, you know, you might not see in a traditional school. Yeah. Um, and then we'll bring in, um, you know, social studies and, you know, potentially a foreign language, just, you know, those things that as they uh, get to the end of the day, they're, we know they're already starting to, to, to turn, it, turn it off a little right. bit, you know. Right, yeah. And, you know, I love what he's talking about when he uses the term chapel, uh, regardless if it's uh, a traditional term or not. You know, the Bible tells us that I love those that love me and those that seek me early will find me. We will start your student's day out every single day with a devotion, but with prayer. There may be a worship. And, and, and I, what he's saying is your students are going to be leading those things. Yes, we will initially start that out. But your students, we're going to teach your kids how to speak. Some are going to have a talent and a gift and a calling to speak. And we'll have those. We'll cr help them develop what they're going to say and help them stand up and speak. Some are called to play an instrument. We'll help them along or write a song or sing a song, whatever it may be, lead in prayer, whatever it may be. We want your students to start getting experience in leading in those areas. Right, and, and we'll, we'll never know that until we get them in yeah. that situation. So, yeah. you know, some of them might not ever, um, but some of them might, might have, like you said, a, a natural gift inside them yeah. to do that. And also it's it's been proven that um, peers learn from each other yeah. uh, very, very well. So if we can get the students speaking to other students, um, that's going to be a fantastic uh, point in our <laughs> in our school because that's going to be uh, a time when we know that it's hitting home for yeah. them. Well, and we've learned here at church, we've learned that if, if we want our kids to be excited about coming back to church, then we need to make church fun. Now, it's very important that our kids in church, that they learn about the characters in the Bible, they learn from the scriptures, but we want them on Saturday and on Sunday morning to say, come on, Mom, come on, Dad, let's go to church. I don't mm -hmm. want to miss church. And most of our kids are just like that. They love our church because we've learned how to teach but make it fun and make it exciting. We have events throughout the year that make the kids absolutely love coming here. And so while we know that it's so important in your minds, especially in the time that we're living in, that your kids learn, we also know that it's important that your kids kids want to come to school and so while we'll be focusing on them getting the best education possible we'll also be focusing on how do we create an environment for them to want to come back and so that's uh, part of what we'll be doing here at the school so you've talked about the weekly schedule but there's different structures for throughout the year that different schools go by tell us about what we've researched and, and what we've decided here for the school for a year all right, so this might be, um, I don't know, one of the biggest uh, hurdles to overcome for some, some parents sending students here is that we're going to run on a, a less traditional schedule throughout the year, and we're going to do uh, what some people term as a, as a Sabbath kind of schedule, um, where we go on, on a six-week uh, instruction period, and then we take that seventh week off. Um, now, when you look at the schedule or you hear that, you might think, well, that's crazy, uh, what we have found through research, though, and there's a lot of a lot of a lot of uh, research to support yeah. this, is that um, students retain knowledge much better yeah. if they don't have huge gaps between um, their instruction. Um, so we're going to go kind of like a a year round, uh, which I know sounds bad for some people, and I know like our culture in America is set up to where we where we take that long break through the summer. Um, but again, to that point, we find that when students come back in August, uh, we spend about six weeks of, of the, you know, re reviewing what we, what they should know from last year. Because what happens is those students, they go home for the summer break and they do nothing yeah. school related. Um, so when they come back, um, 
let's just take a 10th grader coming back from ninth grade. You know, 10th grader is going to have to know. They're going to have to build off of what they know from ninth grade uh, because 10th grade is difficult. They, they get a lot more difficult uh, classes and things like that. And if they don't retain what they learned from ninth grade, they're not going to be very successful, at least in the early part of mm -hmm. their 10th grade year. Um, they're going to have to do a lot of review and a lot of catching up. Um, and a lot of that pressure gets put right back on the instructor, yeah. uh, which is not necessarily fair. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a six on, one off, six week on, one week off. Um, we're going to, of course, take our breaks for Christmas. Uh, we're going to, of course, take a break for Thanksgiving. And then we're going to take a, about a four, four and a half week time off um, through the summer. So they still get that time. Um, and if people have summer vacations planned, which, you know, everybody does, sure. then they can just schedule it for that time. Um, but it's not going to look, you know, like May 25th, we're done. Right. It might look more like June 25th or and, something like that. And don't let that uh, scare you in any way. It's actually the same amount of days right. that Kentucky requires public schools. We're just breaking it up throughout the year more often. And here's what we know, and he's right, and, I, and I've done the same research just like you can. Uh, but two and a half months, you've created the worst habits, and all yeah. those habits have to be broken. And, and again, it's about six to eight weeks, especially for our elementary kids, to catch up. Uh, and, and so we don't want them, you know, in about 30 days, there still can be some bad habits, but yeah. we want to give them uh, a, a month off, maybe a little more than a month off, but then get them back into learning and then it's going to be easier. Your kids will excel better. I mean, this is research that has been known for some mm -hmm. time, but yet we still have an antiquated uh, school year uh, based on an, yeah. an outdated uh, system that in America just doesn't. Right. And I think what, what some people look at it and say, oh, this is not right for us, is that, you know, that week off might not line up with the public school spring break or that week off might not line up with the public school fall break. So it's like, oh, if my kid or my student comes here, then they're not going to have time with their friends. And I mean, you know, uh, the schedule is, it changes based on the year. Um, so there might be sometimes it lines up and sometimes it doesn't. But I mean, um, you know, again, we're focused on educating the student. Yeah. Um, they're still going to get their time off. Yes. And like you said, we're going to go 37 weeks. Um, that's 185 days of the year. Um, and anybody that has homeschooled before knows that um, as long as you get that instruction time in during the year, you can take – your schedules can look very different depending yeah. on who's done it. You know, I've, I've seen some take the entire month of December off, which sounds crazy to a lot of people. But as long as they get that instruction time right. in somewhere, then the state of Kentucky and I'm sure other states around America are fine with that. Yeah. So, Jason, I've known you for almost two years, and I've come to really appreciate your passion for teaching kids. So tell us, in your words, why you think Crosspoint Christian and Academic Pod is the right fit for our parents who are wanting a Christian academic education for their students. Right. So one of the things that I want to um, just put out there right off the bat is that we're going we're gonna to teach kingdom education. And that really doesn't have anything to do with our, our name or anything really to do with the curriculum. But if you want to think of it in that sense, I, I think of it in that sense. Yeah. Like I'm going to have a bunch of kids here myself. I want, the, I want to know that when they come in the door, we're focused on, on that. Um, what um, I feel like is such a vital part to what we do here is the fact that, you know, we have a, a partnership with our parents. Yeah. Um, so many times... I feel like, especially in, in the most recent um, times here, the past few years, is the parent uh, sends or guardian sends student to school, and however they do there is based on the instructor. So if they do well, great. If they don't do well, well there has to be something wrong with the instructor. One of the things that we're going to do here, and one of the things I feel like a lot of inst instruction should be, is the fact that we partner with with those parents or yes, guardians absolutely um so we're gonna we're gonna make sure that you know of course transparency is going to be a big part um we we want to make sure that if there's something happening here um we don't want to get four weeks down the road before parent or guardian hears about what's <coughs> going on we yeah. want to get that right off the bat and say you know we notice this is going on we're going to work with it but we also need 
your help yeah. um, because we have them, you know, eight hours a day. Uh, not all of that's instruction time. Like we said, there's lunch, there's snack, there's recess, there's, you know, depending on the day, Fridays could be a lot of uh, physical activity or even life skills or even, you know, learning a foreign language, those kind of things. Um, so we only have them eight hours a day, which means the majority of the day they're home, right? Uh, which means that that partnership really comes into play yeah. when when that child is or that student is not here with us. Um, they need to be getting the same instruction and, and support away from here that they're getting here. So he, he said a very important word as a parent to me is transparency. And one of the things we've talked about is doing this, what we're doing once yeah. a week. And, and we feel like, because we know parents, you're working, you got a lot going on, you've got supper, then you, you want to spend time with the family. And just coming in and out of the school all the time is not always convenient. So what we want to do is make sure on a weekly basis, we are touching bases with you, letting you know what's going on with the school this way. Uh, any issues that may be coming up or, or any problem areas or any events we may be talking about, and we want you to be involved. And we may come up with some crazy idea, and we need your input to see if we can pull it off. But listen, he's absolutely right. This is a partnership. This is We have to join together. Our concern is for our students. We want our kids to learn in the best way possible. Uh, and we want you to feel comfortable and, and trust your, your school administration trusts that your school has your children's best interests at heart. Yeah, and sometimes you see that, like an email, there's just no, I mean, there's no emotion behind an email. So, so many times I feel like parents might even take an email wrong um, because, you know, we're not, they're not picking up on any kind of nonverbal communication that we might have. Yeah. Um, I feel like if we can get into a situation where we do this um, as much as possible, um, that lets them see the kind of people we are. Yeah. So whenever we do send an email of communication or a phone call or something, they already know who they're talking to yeah. before they even start. You know, some of the things that has always bothered me about school, just all schools in general, is the preparedness for real life that many of our students are just so unaware of. Uh, for example, personal credit, uh, banking and balancing and budgeting, uh, investing, uh, you know, becoming an entrepreneur, how this guy start that business, uh, things like that. Before I got in ministry, I worked in finance, and, and it's just shocking to me the young people that would come in to buy a car or whatever and and they had no idea. I mean, they were making minimum wage and, and think they could buy an $80,000 car for $200 a month. They just didn't know. Hmm. And so these are some of the topics that we want to incorporate within our CAPS curriculum because every high school graduate should know how important a credit score is in their life. It's hmm. going to follow them around. A lot of our kids don't realize it. If you, don't, if you miss a payment on something, it affects you. And then when you get married and go to buy a house, it's tough to buy a house. They didn't know. So mm -hmm. these are things we want to make sure that we're teaching. Uh, he mentioned life skills. In some of our life skills curriculum, we want to teach them. We want to teach our students and your kids, we want to teach them how dangerous a credit card can be. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with having a credit card on occasion for emergencies or, or whatever. We won't get into the philosophy of credit cards, <laughs> but there are dangers behind it. And we want to make sure that, you know, when your kid graduates and he's on his way to college and they're set up with a booth signed here for a credit card, we want to make sure your kid knows that's not a free ride. There's a lot of danger that comes along with that. Right. And, so. you know, we're not saying that we're experts in everything. Um, you know, we've, we've lived some life, though, yeah. and we know. And, again, that's why the partnership works because um, the student gets, you know, they can take what we say, they can take what parents, guardians say, and they can take that advice however they want to. Now, we also do know people that are very, very skilled in these particular areas, sure. and yeah. we can bring them in, you know, talking about checks and balances, sure. talking about accounting, talking about um, – you know, savings investing. accounts and investing. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So yeah. when you talk about those things, you know, I, we know people that we can bring in here and even though we're not experts, I'm not claiming to be an expert in investing or even, um, you know, accounting, definitely not. But I mean, we know people that are, we know people that are very skilled in those areas. Yeah. You know, Jason, I know that 
what I'm going to bring up is somewhat of a touchy subject, but given our current political and our social cultural environment that America is in, the world is in, you know, many parents like us, we've chosen to enroll our kids in a Christian school. So let's talk about our commitments to our parents who are concerned about their child's education, but the fundamentals outside of that, things such as security and, and even building security, but personal security and, and bullying, things like that. Yeah, so again, that's another reason that we, you know, we're striving to, I mean, we want as many students here as can be here, but, you know, we're going to work on very small classroom sizes. Um, again, public school, one teacher to every 30 students. That's tough yeah. for one teacher, even <coughs> if they're the best teacher in the world. And I know that our schools right here in Muhlenberg County or Hopkins County or even Kentucky are filled with some of the best educators there ever was. Yeah. But still, with that many in the class, it's very difficult to catch everything. Um, and things get missed. Uh, and, you know, if they get missed for an extended period of time, we know those things just tend to escalate. Uh, one of the great things about what we're trying to do here, um, again, we're taking care of the whole person. Okay, I'll just keep coming back to that, keep reiterating that. But um, one of the things that we, when we look at bullying, um, you know, kids from a safety aspect is, um, first off, we can catch it quicker. Yeah. Um, second off, um, we're teaching from a biblical worldview. Yep. Okay, and, and, and God talks about these things. But, you know, really, in my experience uh, with what, you know, especially in middle school and high school, which is where I see a lot of bullying, um, once the, the person giving the treatment understands what it would be like to receive that treatment, it, it ceases to exist. Mm -hmm. Like, they pretty much just stop and say, my goodness, I don't want this done to me, or... Maybe I didn't know I was being super manipulative, or maybe I didn't understand this was a form of bullying. Um, maybe it's just the way that they behave elsewhere, and they think that it's okay. Yeah. And that's the great thing about being here, being in a small uh, environment where we teach from the Bible, um, and we stand on, on, on what God says here, that um, you know we, under we understand how one another need to be treated. We understand how people need to treat other people. Well, we know that bullying comes from an insecurity from somewhere, mm -hmm. somewhere, somewhere along the way. And so, yes, I think with us being able to teach kingdom principles, right. it helps us to, uh, to get resolve an issue before it ever starts. But, but not only that, man, being in a small group setting, we're able to identify it, as Jason said, and, and we can pull that person aside, not to embarrass them, but to talk to them about it and maybe figure out, What's going on? And that may even help you as a parent if we can all come together and work together to mm -hmm. resolve whatever issue may be causing that conflict. We want to help them work that out. And, and that's just another <coughs> aspect of the transparency we're talking about, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, if something like that arises, immediately we're going to let parent or guardian know, yeah. say, hey, this is, this is what's been going on. This is what we're seeing. Like you said, we catch it before it happens because we're in a small and and I know I keep saying that, and I know that there might be some question out there. Well, if you are really successful, how is it going to look if you you know if your numbers explode? We're talking from this point of view because this is what we want to do. Like we're not looking to have 500 students and then everybody gets lost in mm -hmm. in the cards. We we want to keep it to the point where we do have this impact on these on these students and um, we like you said we are trying to build these future leaders um, and we want them to, to to if if they learn from that mistake then they can in turn catch it maybe with another pupil of theirs yeah um, so then they can you know again peer learning from peer they can they can maybe make more of an impact on that person down the road than we could one thing that we want to make sure that you understand is that this school, we will have standards. There will be codes of conduct. Yeah. There will be expectations. Uh, not to sound harsh, but we want you to know that, you know, we have a standard here. We expect your child to excel. So, Jason, talk to us about grades. Talk to us about attendance. And you've hit on character a little bit, but let's, mm -hmm. let's talk about that. So, attendance... Um as we know, um, is, is vital to a student's success. Yeah. Um, 
you know, there will be a limit. Um, we're going to set it up to where there is a limit. You know, X amount of days, we've not exactly set that yet. But, you know, with us running on this schedule we're running on, there really shouldn't be any reason for a child to miss. I mean, I, I know sickness I get. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, if they're just laying out of school just because they want to lay out of school, we're running on a, on, a, on a schedule where, you know, if they go, oh, you know, just in a couple of weeks, I can be off for, you know, a whole week. So uh, hopefully we're, we're, we're appealing to them that way, but uh, attendance is extremely vital. Uh, we're going to be um, not only teaching from this Discovery K-12 curriculum that they're going to be expected to do every single day they're here, but, you know, we're going to add things, right? I mean, you know, for those small ones, um, writing, phonics, uh, for the older ones, like you said, um, teaching um, things like um, entrepreneurship or, um, you know, again, investing, those mm -hmm. kind of things that um, we're going to expect them to, to be here for so that they um, can learn those. You know, we're, we're not just, you know, going to give them a, a free pass. Yeah. Um, and, and we are going to have standards that, that um, policies, procedures, things. And again, not from a harsh standpoint, but just because we we understand that when the students show up, um, they're they're much more successful. Yeah. Um, so attendance is 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 a, a vital part of their success, and that really just goes with any school. Yeah. It's not just here, um, but grades. Um, one of the things that um, a lot of people don't understand about grades is um, they think that if they fail or if they don't hit the mark that they want to then uh, it's over. And I don't necessarily see things that way. I see the fact that if they don't hit the mark that they want to, or if we see things trending downward, mm -hmm. then we've, we've found something that doesn't work for them. So therefore, we know what not to do right. next time. Yeah. And I think that failure is a, is a learning opportunity. Sure. That's what I feel. Now, we will have, of course, a standard, like you said, of you know, uh, see or better. Um, and once we see things going south of, of C range, um, we'll have to identify it again quickly because we're in such a small group. Uh, again, transparency with the parent, guardian, parent or guardian, hopefully partnering with us in the way that, that we want them to. Yeah. And then, um, you know, everybody working together to get that. And, and again, there's different types of learning out there, right? right? So just because they're hitting a D level or even an F level, that doesn't mean that they're stupid or doesn't mean they can't learn it. That just might mean that they need to be taught yeah. in a different way. So our goal is for your student to make A's and B's. We want to make straight A's, and we understand sometimes they make B's. We also understand sometimes they make C's. You know, if your kids are making all C's, they're coasting. It, we will have an environment yeah. here where kids should be able to excel. Yeah, there's a lack of effort but, yeah. <laughs> on that one. But we also know this. We know if your kid's got two A's and two B's and an F, there's something that we're doing wrong, mm -hmm. but that F is not a failure. That F is an opportunity for us to figure out this particular subject, they're not learning the way it's being taught. So we can, as I said, we can figure out how to get that F up. If it's all F, that's things we gotta approach. Again, and yeah, and that's another thing with, with traditional schools or just America as a whole, is uh, they, they look at failure as a bad thing. Yeah. And I mean, to some extent, yeah, we, we, got, we got something we got to figure out, but failure is not always a bad thing. Um, again, we, got st we, we will have standards, and, and we're not just going to, you know, accept, like you said, all Fs or, you know, all that. But if we see somebody that's not doing well in something, that just means that we need to try something different. And there is a registration process, and, and, and we don't want to turn any kids away. However, we want you to know that your kids are going to be safe. Right. Uh, this is not an alternative school. This is a Christian school, and there is the expectation of an excellence in academia. Mm -hmm. and, and like Jason has said, well-rounded learning. Yeah, we're looking to train the best. Yes. And we want the best effort. But we also don't want to be, this is your last step before whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to be the person that, or, or the place where they say, well, you couldn't cut it here, so this is, we're going to get you straightened yeah. out. You know, we're not we're not necessarily boot camp. Right. Um, now we'll we'll have strict guidelines and standards, but again, we want to we want to have fun here. We want to again the safety aspect is super super uh, key. Um, but yeah, we're not looking for. Um, 
I don't know. We're not looking for people to just to, just to say they can't cut it anywhere else. Maybe yeah. you can straighten them out. Well, and we don't we don't believe there's any throwaway kids. We believe no. there's that all kids can excel. In this environment, we're not going to be equipped to handle uh, a student that is habitually right. uh, caused issues in their schools. That's just not our area of expertise. Uh, and, and again, it goes back to we don't want the majority of our students here being concerned because someone has come in that, mm -hmm. uh, and, th and that again, it, it goes back to our transparency and our promise to you to make sure that your kids are in a safe environment. Right, and, th and again, it might come off as harsh, um, but I think that again, with being transparent and being very clear in what, what Crosspoint stands for yeah, yeah. Uh, is key, so. Absolutely, so um, we'll have some electors uh, and some extracurricular things. And one of the things that's kind of cool and exciting is uh, Jason is a, uh, a chef. Talk yeah. to us a little bit about that. So three years ago, um, I did enter culinary school. And uh, it was an online program, but um, it was one of those things where, again, I had to be attentive and I had to get online and uh, be on online with chef and as they went through how to make dishes and how to, how to do things, um, I would have to do those as well. Many pictures, many videos, um, and they would, they would rate my work based on what they saw and how I did it at home. Um, so one of the things that I'm excited about with, with this particular pod or, or this school here that we're, we're looking at starting is, is that we can actually talk about food and we yeah. can actually learn not only like what we like to eat but we also learn just you know the how taste works yeah you know because so many people don't understand that they just know that you know steak's good and broccoli's bad well it <laughs> goes back to why. making learning and making the school fun right. it's just these are things that you couldn't do in, in a school with 1100 students right i mean you can do home ec but i mean you're limited yes you're limited in home ec yeah. so here we can actually bring out the cutting boards and we can actually bring out yeah. the, the pots and pans and we can make something so we're also looking at uh partnering with a local exercise facility so those are things we'll be offering a mm -hmm. little bit down the road also uh, with music training and art things like that so we've got a lot of things that we want your kids to be able to uh get involved in that we don't want them just coming here and and you know ABCs and and mm -hmm. math and then going home and what we want your kids to learn some things we he had mentioned a foreign language and so there are things that we want them to uh, learn and have opportunities and and I, we know that uh, you know the founder of Duolingo uh, he he's done a great job and that organization has done a great job and so we believe that would be a good opportunity to again assist and help your student learn. Uh, that's something that they're interested in. So, so what's next? I know we've been talking for some time. We're, we're very excited, but we want to get Super as much excited. information <laughs> to you in this video as possible. Future videos may not be quite as lengthy, but yeah. we'll have a registration available to you very soon. We're working on this. Of course, this is all happening very quickly. So mm -hmm. uh, we're working day and night on this. So that would be the next thing is, is getting the registration out to you. Uh, obviously, if you have any questions, uh, we would love for you to uh, reach out to us with questions. We'll talk to you about tuition fees and things like that in, in the registration. Well, and the good thing also, just to add to that, is, is the cost is kept very low. Yeah. Because we're going with a online format. Yes. Um, now, there will be a fee for like a daily, um, you know, uh, being here and, and using the facility kind of thing. But... Um, just to start off for you know for the spring semester we're we're going to go with um, like I said Discovery K12 which is they don't charge you to yes. to use that now as we work into our uh, the 20 you know 24 25 school year um, we might <coughs> you know talk and come up with maybe a little bit more strenuous curriculum or we might even be able to do, to do more books and things like that and yeah. maybe you know more of a hybrid curriculum yes. so those things will come but as yeah. for right now, um, when we say tuition, don't don't get upset or don't don't fr freak out. Um, we're just we're really um, here to make sure that your your student is successful. Absolutely. Um, you know, one thing so many Christian parents have, as a pastor, has talked with me 
uh, over the years is how troubled that they are with how the this cultural, political indoctrination will impact their their kids while they're at school. I mean, we can't shield our kids all the time, and right. and so they're very concerned. They're afraid that their kids will be taught a, a form of truth that doesn't line up with your family Christian values. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we ask these questions, but then we think, but what can I do? That's always like, but what, I'm just one person. What can I do? I got a full-time job. My wife works, my husband works, and we got a family. We've got all the, what can, there's nothing I can do. And, you know, I believe that our parents, our generation, they sent us to school, and I believe that, that they believe confidently that we were going to get a good education, we would be in a good environment, and you know what? They were right. That was their responsibility, was to make sure we were getting good grades, make sure we went to school, and they didn't have a lot of concern that we have. But nowadays, it's different. Um, a parent's responsibility is so much greater then what did you make on a spelling test? Mm -hmm. it, it is so much greater than, you know, let me see your report card. Our parents' responsibility is no longer just kid leaves at 7 in the morning, comes back at 3. We have to partner with our kids right. in this education. We have to be engaged with the full spectrum of our child's education. We have to. When a culturally frustrated parent Today, when they ask, what can I do, we believe that Cross Point Christian Academic Pod and similar Christian schools, we believe that this is the greatest investment in your child's future. And honestly, this is a move to restore family values in our community. This is how we begin, by investing in the next generation. Jason, before we close, have you got anything? Yeah, so just to that point, I mean, I think that um, a lot of people will ask, you know, one of the main questions will come up is, well, you're, you're doing a secular curriculum in a, in a Christian school. Um, and I think that to your point you just said is, I don't think it's the curriculum that keeps parents up at night right. when it comes to schools. Exactly. I think a lot of times it's more their integrity, the yeah. student's integrity, <coughs> the student's character, those, those things that come along with um, going to uh, more traditional or public schools. Um, so again, I'm just going to reiterate the fact that, you know, we, we're, I'm going to consider this kingdom education. I'm going to, even though it's not in our name, um, I, I love it. I, yeah. I think when, when I say that and, and I'll keep it up, uh, uh, you know, r just repeating it for the students so that they know. Um, but also again, it's talking about why our job here is so important and why we've answered the call that God's put on our lives is because we honestly believe that the next generation of kids is, is what's going to, uh, and that's going to shape shape our community, it right? And, and shape our, our town, shape our, our state. And I just want to, you know, just read out of, out of Matthew 28. Um, And at the very end of Matthew 28, we talk about the Great Commission. And I'm just going to read two verses here. And it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you to the end of the age. This is, our, this is what Jesus told the disciples to do. This is what Jesus expects of us. Yeah. We are to train the next generation for what's coming. And um, it's kingdom education it's kingdom work we're we're here um and we're gonna make it happen amen we want to thank you for taking time to watch this video again if you've got any questions please reach out to us i want to close this in a quick prayer father in the name of jesus god we thank you for this opportunity to invest in our kids lives and through their education god into our our community father give us favor and wisdom and and we thank you that you have put this school here that this is you father god help us to uh, make the right decisions, give us wisdom to make the right choices, Father God. And God, give these parents the wisdom and the confidence to know that they're making the right choice in this school that you've established here. And we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen.